Um, so this is a talk about interaction design. Um, there wasn't anything in the agenda, so I figured none of you knew what this random chick Raz was talking about. So um, I don't know if any of you is familiar. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you is familiar with interaction design, but what I'm specifically talking about today is tangible interaction design and tangible interfaces. I speak a bit fast, so if you need me to slow down, just let me know. So my name is Rezan Sadiq, born in Jordan. Interaction designer now living in Berlin and working for Artcom, which is a pretty cool uh, media design agency that specializes in interactive sculptures and installations um, and environments and architectures. So we work mainly with big one off installations. So I'm going to start with my personal journey into design and how I get there um, from computer engineering. Um, so let me start with a short story. When I was 21, I finished my degree in computer engineering and uh, I was an A student in the University of Jordan. So they sent me to Berlin to do an internship. And there I discovered I was useless and I was nothing. Um, and it was a bit frustrating at the beginning because I had no practical skills while all interns could do a lot of things, um, the European ones. So I was wondering where, where is it that went wrong? What, what, did I, what didn't I learn there in Jordan? So I was um, it was mainly those simple fabrication digital tools that we were not familiar with. We learned a lot of theory, but nothing that was actually useful for prototyping. So that was fine. I get the exposure to a lot of interdisciplinary field and to that merge between design and technology. Um, and it got me really interested. So when I went back to Jordan, a bunch of my friends and I started shipping Arduinos and sensors and we just started learning using wikis and instructables and there was a huge community it was like um, third industrial rev revolution for us so and there I held my first exhibition in McCann house and it was titled connected disconnected um, and mainly I made those plasticky sculptures and added some sensors so that when people get closer to the installations they would get anxious and their hearts would beat faster um, just simulating how we feel when we're sitting there with our laptops and somebody tries to distract us. Um, and there, I, after this one of installation um, and a few prototypes, I get really interested in good design and in bad design and critiquing and knowing more theory about what is good design and why do we admire that. Like things by Apple, this classic iPod um, was an amazing um, invention by Steve Jobs and his crew, but everybody knew that this is a start for a phase and a decade of good design. But there was also a lot of junk around, like, like the numlock button. Do, do you know, I mean, we all know, just lock the numbers, but it just sucks so much. I'm so offended when I see a keyboard with a numlock on it. You know, it was used when there was an old um, IBM keyboard with 84 keys. Now it's not needed, but a lot of keyboards insist to have it. And that's bad design. Apple don't have it because they're good people. Um, yeah. So I decided to save the world and study interaction design. Um, and I found this really simple definition for you um, who wonder what is interaction design. And mainly it's shaping digital things for people's use. So it's very user-centered. Um, and it's not about really the form or um, like graphic design and pushing pixels. It's about what is the best usability and how can we shape this product or this space environment for people. Um, this is to illustrate the idea of what I studied as an interaction designer. I'm going to show you this one project. It's called PastFM. And we designed it, two teammates and I. Um, wanting to give users a new way to browse through music. We simply wanted to give the user a tangible timeline to browse through music chronologically. Um, I tried to ship it back from New York, but um, it didn't get here, so I'm just going to show you a video. Talk with 
listen to embarrassing music? So here uh, we pull the music um, from the, the cloud, the digital, the Spotify and Last.fm records and we just load them in this timeline. But we could also do that with genres like hip hop or jazz so that users can get to know the progress of a certain genre if they want to or even an artist. So you get the hits year by year, what was the uh, most played track that year? And in this vault, there's an RFID tag. And this is a feature that we pulled from um, people's desire these days to share things with their friends so we can actually give tokens to each other. brings us to the interesting topic of the Internet of Things. Um, and here we are talking about connecting the physical word with the digital word. Um, because these days we have sensors and as um, people from Alpha Telecom said, NFC chips as well, embedded in so many products and mobile phones and um, just objects around us. So this gives us the opportunity to, um, for another word where objects help us and they talk to us and they tell us stories. Um, yeah, so this is one example of um, Fitbit. If, uh, does anybody know Fitbit products? Yeah, if, a few people do. And I think that's why I'm here, because in Europe, everybody knows Fitbit, and half of my colleagues have like the bracelets around, um, yeah, around the wrists. But here, we need to get into that. So Fitbit basically is a wireless activity tracker. They have a wireless scale and um, and um, something like a tracker that you put while you run and tells you how many steps, etc., and one for sleeping. And all of these uh, monitoring um, data is sent to a web app where you could browse and get to know how is your activity and you could share that with your friends. And people are so motivated to reach their fitness goals using these. So this is only one theme where um, interaction designers are uh, looking into. But there's a variety of themes where you could start looking, such as education or uh, medical health, um, renewable er energy or transportation. There is, like, really, in every day, like, you just walk out and you think there is something that I need. Um, and I think there's, like, really unlimited amount of ideas. And if you need ideas to get started, I have a doc sheet with a bunch of ideas, so could work on them together. So yeah, you might ask yourself, where should I start? Because it seems like a bit overwhelming. Um, you, could, you might chip an Arduino as a start. It's a good place. Um, I'm going to tell you five tips. It's my two cents on design. I'm, I'm not the person to give you like a whole um, encyclopedia. But this is what I learned during the past year in Copenhagen. So the first, as I said, look for opportunities and needs around you and around the people around you, your parents and friends, and snap them into products and services, simply. The second one is uh, once you get an idea, don't start thinking too much ahead and about the business plan and where to get money and is there technology to support it or not. Try to prototype it fast and as dirty as possible. Most of the projects that we've done last year in CIID, the school, was done in a week to two weeks, Passive M entirely was made in two weeks. The technology and uh, the form, everything. And a lot of them has turned into companies now. And there's uh, several companies launching from products that were prototyped in a week or two. So just try a week or two and then you might fail and just move on. So um, Go for the niche markets. Um, People tend to think about the mass market and what would boom and make a lot of money. But in the niche markets, if you and five, people, five other people would use it, I'd say design it. Because there would be a lot of other people that you don't know about that actually want it. Um, and yeah, the niche markets are just as needed as other ones. 
Now, once you have an idea and you want to build it, keep it simple and invisible. Try to um, make it, try to make the user not think. If the user have to think about your interface, it's probably a good design. They need to reach their pur purpose as quickly as possible and without any heartache or headache. Dita says no. I think this is, you can understand this if I don't explain your whole history of who's Dieter. Um, Dieter Rams is a German design guru um, who was the head of uh, design in Brown and he worked for Apple and, um, and he's a very um, influential person in design. And he always said about new features, if there's a feature that is really not, like if, if you remove this feature and it would still work, he would say remove that feature. So try to keep it simple. If there's a feature that you really love, try to keep it for later versions. Um, yeah, and I would actually, I think that's about it for today. And I just want to end with what the principles of good design by Dieter Rams. Gutes Design sollte innovativ sein. Gutes Design macht ein Produkt brauchbar. Gutes Design ist ästhetisches Design. Gutes Design macht ein Produkt verständlich. Gutes Design ist ehrlich. Gutes Design ist unaufdringlich. Gutes Design ist langlebig. Gutes Design ist konsequent bis ins letzte Detail. Gutes Design ist umweltfreundlich. Last but not least, gutes Design ist so wenig Design wie möglich. Thank you.